the dictionary says that worship is the expression or the act of love, adoration, respect, and honor. So did you know that everyone worships? Everyone. Whether you're a believer, whether you're unbeliever, whether you believe in God, or if you don't believe in God, you still worship. The object of worship could be different. It could be a person. It could be power. It could be position. It could be money. It could be an ideology. An atheist still worships. Because all of us are created as human beings to, to be in awe of something, to give ourselves wholeheartedly to something. We are created like that. But that object of worship, if it's not God, then something else takes that place. But when we look at this question, what is worship? Uh, when we turn to Psalm 95 and verses 6 and 7, the psalmist says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Right? Verse 6, he says, Come, let us worship and bow down. And he makes a very interesting statement. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. He says, let us kneel before him. Let us worship him. He's our maker. The second thing he says in verse 7 is, he is our God. So the first thing we see is that worship is actually a recognition of who God is. Psalm 5 and verse 7, he says, As for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship towards you your holy name. So when we come into church, you know, Psalm is saying, when I, when, I, when I step into church, I come with that fear of God. I come with that reverence. Worship is reverence for God. Worship is also communion with God. So recognition, reverence, and thirdly, communion. Now communion is, is um, you know, it's sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and innermost feelings. And fourthly, worship is our heartfelt response to an encounter. You know, we encounter God in the pages of Scripture. We encounter God with worship, in worship. We encounter Him. He manifests Himself. He introduces Himself. He says, hello, this is who I am. And worship is our response to that encounter. The Lord Jesus says is that the true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. So what does it mean in spirit? It means that our spirit, our innermost being, our core of our being, with our whole heart, we are supposed to worship. The true worshiper worships in spirit. It's not a half-hearted worship. It's something which is wholehearted. And the second thing he says is who will worship in truth. So there's no pretense. There's no hypocrisy. There's no pretending. There's no putting on an act. But it's in truth. Truth is also according to the word. Because on John chapter 17 and verse 17, the Lord says, Sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. Worship transforms us. It changes us from the inside out. In worship, we experience God's presence. You know, God is present everywhere. But in worship, we become aware or sensitive to the presence of God. And we experience the presence of God. You know, God promises degrees of his presence, right? God is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. But he also says that where two or three are gathered, I'm there in your midst. In worship, the Lord empowers us to rule and reign. You know, we have, as believers, as new creations, our identity is that of kings and priests. Sometimes I don't feel like worshiping. There are days when I, when I feel like this is the day the Lord has made. And there are times when, you know, it's like I hope the sun sets. From the rising of the sun to the going down. I wish I could see the going down, right? So sometimes we have that impression that worship is a happy, clappy time. And only when things are, you know, happy and nice, I can worship. But again, when we look into the word, we see that that's not the case. That's not the case. Yes, worship is celebration. But worship is also, you know, all those things, recognition of who God is and reverence for God in those difficult times. The psalm is in Psalm 34 and verse 1. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Does that challenge you? 